Hi guys, so today I wanted to review these cute little sets um, that I picked up from Local King Rubber Stamp. So this is one of them, super adorable. Again, kind of not what I'm used to working with. So for me, this will be really fun and something different. Um, we have the Mr. Her Dress Up set, which is this little um, sheep or lamb, you know, <laughs> and he has his little clothes. Um, but he looks like he's kind of naked under here, like the yarn was unraveled from his little bottom half here, right? His little face. And then he has little costumes. So we have the little pumpkin, uh, Santa Claus, the um, kind of clown, and then the graduate. Uh, right now she has a deal, of course, it depends on when you're watching this, uh, that you get all these items in a special with free shipping, so you can check that out. Um, it comes with these little four hats that you can then put on top of their heads. So there's a party hat, which is adorable. The, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, witch's hat, a Santa Claus hat, and then the uh, graduate mortar board is what they're called. And then here, I'm just trying to see about my lighting, um, are all the dies to go with it. So the dies for every single piece there. Of course, you have your little hats. And then um, I had also picked this up. Was this by itself? I don't remember. If, I think it was by itself. I don't think it was in a bundle. But either way, I haven't done the stepper card uh, tutorial or, or review. So I'm going to use that. It says, say, use a shim of lightweight card board or heavy cardstock on the top side of the finished sandwich to ensure a clean cut with these detailed dies. I don't, you know, I've never noticed that's what it says in all of them. <laughs> I just uh, run them through and it works. So I've never really paid too much attention to that. Let me get this stuff off of here. So really quickly, what we're going to do first is go ahead and make the card base and then we'll work up to making our little guy. And, oh, I guess the bundle in this is that you get the um, these corner dies. So these corner dies are really interesting. You can see Lisa used them in lots of different videos. I don't really, I don't think I can use them today, but I'll try and use them in another video just so you kind of see. But basically whenever you have your piece of paper, let's say this is your paper, you would take L1, L2, L, you know, right one, right two. So put them on the left, put them on the right, however, and then run it through and you're gonna have this cool design kind of in the corner of your papers. So. That's what it was. I was like, I think it came with something else, but that, that's what the bundle was right there. Uh, let me move some of these things. So basically you have your standard A2 size card, which, um, you know, it's five and a half by eight and a half. And we're just gonna fold it just to give it a fold. So we have a reference of where we're gonna put our die and it's pretty simple. So I'll we'll put that there. <clears throat> and then we have our die. So uh, if your paper has a direction and you want it to look a certain way, then make sure to fold it that way. But other than that, you're just gonna place this right on the crease. So you have little carrots here that are kind of divided out that you can see where your paper is. So place that right on your crease or as close to it as you can get. <clears throat> and, um, geez, I'm sorry, I make my videos in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> it's like six o'clock right now. And um, sometimes my throat gives me a little, a little funniness. Okay, I'm just gonna stick this here just so it doesn't move, but you know, it's a pretty good sized die, so it's probably not gonna do much, shift around too much for us. And I'm just gonna run this through my Gemini, yep. And plastic. I think that should be enough. I don't think it needs too much. It's not super detailed. Uh, let me just make sure this is on here nicely. I can see I did something, I shifted this. What is going on? This is sticking, I don't know. <laughs> My plate just decided, you know what, it was probably because this metal, this shim kind of stuck to it somehow. All right, let's go. And by the way, whenever you see this one, this is absolutely a pajama sleeve, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's a little dress I got from Kohl's um, a while back, and I like it. All right, we're still gonna need our die um, cutting machine, and you can use your marquee for the other items. Um, obviously, this needs a little bit larger machine for this to go through. Um, she has a really cool um, video where she makes a double stepper, where she uses that and then doubles it up on the other side. I guess on this side, this way, if your paper was big enough. And then when you cut it out, everything is going to have like double steps. But anyway, so now we have this here. And so basically we need to probably start here. Let's start at this front one. It goes up and then this folds up. This one goes back. This one goes up and back. 
Okay, I always start with the front just so I don't get mixed up. I mean, basically, if you start from the back, you know you want a mountain fold. You want it to go up, so just make sure it folds up. But from the front, you're folding back and then up and back and up, right, until you get it. And there it is. How long did that take? Like, seconds, right? <laughs> I mean, pretty quick. So the little dashes are your, like, little kiss cut lines that make you um, fold nicely there on those edges. So what I'm going to do is also mat this up before we move on so that everything's ready. And when we have everything cut out, we'll just work from there. So I'm going to measure these really quickly. Um, so this spot is about two and a half inches by, of course, uh, four and a quarter because that's how big we did it. So I, what I normally do if I'm designing something like this, I might write it down somewhere else, but I'm going to write it right on here. So it's two and a half by four and a half. And what I'm going to do is map my paper a little bit smaller in that area. And, you know, if you want to do something here, that's up to you. I'm gonna probably going to put something here. You don't have to, especially with your paper being colorful already. So this should also be, okay, so three, because obviously it's five and a half, three by, do, do, do. it's like a one inch. I want to say it's about one inch. Let me make sure, now that I can just flatten it back out. My ruler's too big to put in there, yeah, one inch. And then this guy is going to be three by two inches. So she made him nice that the numbers don't have to be too crazy when you go to cut mats for it. So let me cut some mats and I will be right back. Okay guys, so I just took little scraps from my last project that I did with the Kiwi Lane designs. And so I cut this at two and basically just a quarter inch all around smaller than these guys. So um, let me lay this back out and let me get a little bit closer. So this one's two and a quarter by four and a quarter. <clears throat> and this one's three quarter inch by two and three quarters. Right, because those are three, so all around a little bit smaller. You can obviously do your distressing. I just wanted this to really pop and be super pink, so um, there's that. You know what? I went all the way up with this one. I probably should have gone, I think I probably still cut it at four and a quarter, but that's okay. It actually looks really cute that way, so I'll leave that alone. And this one's um, two and three quarters by one and three quarter. Again, you can fill up the whole space. I just like leaving a little bit around the edges. But if you want to cut your paper so that it completely mats all around, you know, cut the first up the whole thing, well then just use the sizes that I told you earlier. So this is three by one. So I have a little piece here that's two and three quarter by three quarter. And that is just gonna be our base card. And then we'll uh, add our little, our little guy. And I was kind of wondering how I wanna color him in. I was thinking about using our Spectrum Noir and stuff, but what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and use my Local King, oh, Local King rubber stamps um, markers. So, <clears throat> a lot of people do like stamping and coloring on watercolor paper, especially because the water-based markers. But that's up to you, however you want to do it. Um, oh, the papers I got them for the Cardabella stack. If you guys remember from Alphabet Junction, or it's called Alphabet Junction, um, just in case you did not watch the Kiwi Lane video, that's where that came from. And what we're going to do is stamp these guys. We're going to have to stamp them in waterproof ink. So VersaFine um, stays on uh, finesse. I know Spectrum Noir has a waterproof ink. This is re really cool, the pebble color, because it kind of will, after we color, it looks like we drew it. But I am going to go ahead and use VersaFine. And I'm going to have to really wait a little while to make sure it's dry. So let's go ahead and stamp this. I'm going to use our little guy. And I'm also going to stamp the uh, outfit, the, the little balloon one. And I just need something to pick this up with. Again, if there's too many air bubbles on this one, it probably shouldn't be a big deal because they're detail stamps. But um, just kind of get those air bubbles out. And versifying what's nice about prepping your the first time I've used these, is that it really sticks, right? Versafine is super great for detail, really, really sticks to your stamps. So let me just make sure that little bow tie, okay. And I'm just trying to make sure the piece of paper I cut is big enough to <laughs> get all this on there. And... Aw, there they are. And you know I pushed really hard on this. I shouldn't have done that. I pushed too hard because this thing is uh, rubbery underneath. But um, I'm just going to leave it. 
I can stamp it again. Obviously, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll turn this over and stamp them again. Should I do that? Fine. I know people are always like, you just kind of go with it. And I do normally, but that, obviously, if I would color that in. Let me just trim this one away. Let's turn this over. Take this guy off. And we will stamp it again. And I won't push down as hard. <laughs> Let's do that again. You really don't have to push that hard, to be honest, with VersaFine. Because it picks up every little detail and does a pretty good job. But... There we go. Okay, I'm being a little more gentle <laughs> this time around. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let these dry for a little while before I go in with my markers just to make sure that we don't smear. Okay, you guys can let me know about the lighting, please, because um, what happened is um, I realized I had this really cute ot light and in my de-stash, when I did the de-stash of my uh, craft cart, and I didn't even point it out to you guys because, like, I know it was my lamp and it's just there. I don't know if you saw it in the very top shelf. And um, and I'm like, why am I over here arguing or fighting with the lighting? I can just put another one over here. So I have this all light here and I have an all light here. And I think it's really nice and bright, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's casting too many shadows. But you guys can let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm going to start with this because I stamped him first anyway. And um, we are just going to use very basic colors on him anyway. So I think I'm going to use the gray um, and just go around the very edges and just kind of color it in a little bit. This is not nothing fancy, any kind of, ooh, you know, anything to write home about. I just literally went around the little edges, right, to give a little texture. I'm just kind of going around the very edges. And again, this is just stamping paper from Crafter's Companion. And so I'm just going around all these little pieces that have some kind of detail and just giving them a little bit of gray coloring here and there. Like, that's literally it, <laughs> you guys. So hopefully that's okay. For you, I'm gonna use this little light peachy pinkish color and I'm just gonna color in part of his little face here. And just down in here. Uh, a little bit in the ears, but I'll probably come back in there and use some pink or something. And then down in his little body area, so his little arms that are kind of showing a little bit of that peachy pink base color. And again, with this stuff, if you come back in, you can kind of get some depth and dimension because it's the same color, but you're layering it up. So if you want to do that, go ahead. I'm just, I'm just putting down color. And for the inside of his ears, I'm going to go with this really light little pink, a little extra something. And little rosy cheeks because he's a little bit cute. Either way. If you're making him a clown, you know, it'd be really cute is to go ahead and just decorate him really like a lot with like clown makeup. That'd be adorable. Uh, oh, I missed one arm. How did I do that? I missed a little arm there. And then if you want to use the black and darken like his little hooves or his little hands, I'd rather kind of not. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. But you can come in and just kind of color in his little hoof a little more. Is that what they have hooves? I'm assuming they're called hooves. I don't know. Um, and a little bit of gray in here. Okay, so that's it for this guy, for his base. Easy. And with this, we're just going to color it in nice and easy. So what color balloon? I know a nice red balloon always looks really great, right? But my background is red. So maybe this blue. Let me see. I basically just color the whole thing in, so. Again, this is just a marker, so it's uh, gonna do what markers do. And maybe what I'll do is come back in with like something white and make a little white line there so it looks cute. Okay, there's the blue. <clears throat> maybe a little red bow. Um. I'm just going to color the dots red, but you can color his whole bow in one color. Yeah, that's kind of what Lisa did real quick, just color the whole thing in. I might need to add a little color. Let's go with the yellow. So if I was going to do this, I changed my mind, I would have done the yellow first all over the thing and then put in the red dots, but now I'm just going to be careful to go around the dots and just kind of add in that yellow. Um, 
That's cute. How about a crazy bright lime green shirt? <clears throat> of course, you can use your Spectrum Nars, your Copics, whatever it is that you, you have there that you like. Oh, I was going to leave his ruffles white, but you know what? I colored it green, so I'm going to go ahead and do a green again. And I'm just going to bring in a darker green to add a little bit of shading here. You don't have to. I'm just going to go under his little bow tie, adding a little dark green around here, around the ruffle. And I'll just add a little dimension. Hopefully you guys can see that. We get a little bit closer. And, I mean, his hand's pretty much white. I, yeah. Well, you know what? I guess they can be gloves. Because that looks different from his little hoof. So let me just make them red. I don't know. And just adding a little more red to make it a little deeper. And what color pants? You know, clowns wear crazy stuff. So, uh, orange? <laughs> I'm going to come back to the dots, don't worry. A little bit of orange. This is a brighter orange, so I'm going to take the darker orange that's in here and just come around the little stripes. As you can see, it's not super perfect. It's That is so cute. And then I'll put some of that color in these darker areas here. Maybe right around the edge there. Adorable. Let's give him some yellow frills. And I'm just going to take that little orange and kind of come in where those lines are. And... Oh, this is the other reason people like to use watercolor paper. Because markers on this kind of paper, it just sucks up your marker, right? So uh, if you want to preserve your markers or the juiciness, you can just kind of... Uh, use watercolor paper because it just it just reacts differently but this is fine um i mean it's taking it pretty nicely and what color dots this is the longest thing and, and this whole thing a very quick card um oh i have a lot of red going on how it's going to go with red let me see okay pink <laughs> let's go with something completely unexpected about some pink dots I can see I missed one. Okay. Oh, this is so cute, you guys. Okay. So now all we're going to do is trim this out. And again, you can kind of see through the dies pretty easily, so you have a good idea. But again, if you want to cut on a scrap piece of paper, just cut out your die and then flip this open so you can kind of see where you're going and put it back down on your die, then you're good to go. But for now, I'm just kind of seeing through them and hopefully, hopefully it's uh, where it needs to be. I don't know, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Okay, and this one almost perfectly lined up. I just sat it there. Look at that. So what I'm looking at is the ruffle on his little pants, the base, and then the um, little ties on the balloon. I think that's pretty good. We will see. I'll put one more piece of tape, just in case. Just because my things are a little bit warped, I don't want them to completely move this. And I'm not trying to get it on the blue balloon so much because I don't want it to peel away my color or mess that area up. Again, it has embossing. I'm not going to... Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. I just don't think it needs the embossing just because of the way I colored it and everything. Yeah, 
yeah, I can see it cut perfectly. Everything's great. Um, should we emboss it? I guess we can. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's put those, especially with Crafter's Companion, the embossing isn't like super great. So I'm just gonna put the rubber mat, plastic, get rid of the magnetic shim, and this guy, and let's run it through one more time. stuck up here. All right. Again, you can run these through your marquee, no problem. Yeah, I mean, it gave a little texture. It didn't do too, too much, so maybe the embossing is just a little extra. And then his little hand moves, of course. <laughs> so cute. Obviously, you're gonna cover it up with his little outfit, but let's say you wanna make a card with the yarn and him and say, you know, you were behind on doing a, a what it's called, or an apology card maybe, or that you were late on sending a birthday card. Um, oh, how cute, the little bow also, of course, moves. This is so adorable, and his little hand pops open here too. So cute. So, I know, it's a shame, and it, <laughs> now that I think about it, I totally co colored him in, there's no reason for it, because I'm gonna cover him up. But you can do that. Lisa has an adorable card where she put this on like a clear acetate, so it moves, and then you see he's naked, and then covers him up, so. Um, you can do that too. Very cute. And so I'm just going to glue this down. Again, trying to avoid the areas that can have some movement, like the little, um, the bow and his little hand. So I'm just putting it right around here. And let me grab some paper so we can make him his little hat. Oh, real quick before we move on, this is kind of what I mean. So see, now I have this piece of paper that I just cut, right? Um, so now I can keep this and use this as my guide for the next time I use this stamp set. Um, I just need to remove one of these pieces of tape. And basically you stamp your, your image and now you have this little guide that when you open it up, you have your stamped image and you just put this on here. So now you see your stamped image really well, seeing where exactly where it's gonna cut and then you lay this back down and then you run it through and now you have it cut out perfectly. Lisa has an extra tip on that. She says to go ahead and go around your whole image with a pen all around the whole die because that does give an extra added security because if you go around this and let's say when you flip this back down your die isn't quite in the right spot, you'll be able to tell. So you, and you'll see that it's a little bit off. See like, okay, my pencil line's way over here. That's not right. So just make sure that when you flip it back down, it's really meeting up with those pencil lines and then you have even more security that you're cutting exactly where you want. Okay. Okay, so there are different size hats here. Um, oh, let's do the stripey. Where's my paper pack? Oh, I like the stripey, but then the stripey's gonna be in the stripey paper, huh? Okay, dots hat. And what's cute is that she does have a smaller, even smaller uh, party hat, or if you want to put this inside of this one and line it up so that it's a party hat, but then you also have like some more texture to it. I mean, that's up to you. Did I cut that too small? That's perfect. And then the little dot, I'll just make a little red dot. Um, I guess you could also just put like a little pom-pom or a little something you might have uh, laying around the house in your craft room there. That'll work. So I'm gonna stick that there and this here, and hopefully those don't move. There we go. All right, let's get this cut out and we'll assemble our card. Oh, hold on, let me turn this over. <laughs> I just realized it was cutting up. Everything with uh, Mr. Dress Up will fit in your marquee or probably even the regular diamond press or um, Gemini Mini or anything like that. Luckily, I didn't think about it. I put um, the stripes should have been facing the cutting edge. I mean, it's too early. I'm sorry. Apparently, <laughs> my head's in a different space right now. But that's okay because it's a small enough item where if I turn around, it's not a big deal. But if you want a certain side of your paper, obviously that needs to cut the face, the cutting edge. 
So I'm just going to take this and put a little bit of glue. Give him a cute little hat. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Put it a little sideways like that. And the little dot on top. Wouldn't that be cute though if you had like a little pom-pom you can stick on there? I'm going to lift this up just a bit so it's right at the tip of his hat. I'm going to let this dry for a second and then we'll assemble our card. Okay, before we finish up, I'm just going to take this silver marker that came from the dollar store and I'll put the little... Just a little highlight, kind of where the highlight was before. You can take a white pen and do the same thing, however you like. And I'm going to put him on here, of course, with some dimensional... And um, people always ask me where I get my dimensional or why I like the glue better because it just works. Um, well, if it's not dried out. I just love this. I mean, you have unlimited ways of using it. Of You know, you put in the syringe. So it's the Colal 3D Glue Gel. Again, I get mine at crafterscompanion.com. I think a lot of people say that they are available on Craft Stash too or these other sites I don't know a lot about. But, um, oh, of course, this thing dried up just a little bit. Let's go. Sorry about that, I just had a fight with it to get that little cap off the tip there. So again, plenty of dimensional. <laughs> so cute. And I kind of want to put him kind of sideways a little bit because, you know, you just put it straight. That's always kind of boring, but do whatever you like. If you want to put them straight up and down, there you go. And then here I'll have some kind of sentiment and I'll have that in the pictures for you guys. Just like maybe a little banner with happy birthday or something. I don't know. But super cute. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I This was fun. It was fun to color in. It was fun to just use regular markers. Um, again, you can use your uh, alcohol ink markers for a more refined look. But I think this is pretty cute, especially because it's probably, you know, a kid's card. Maybe not. I would love to get this card. It's super cute. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll have all the links for you. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.